The rush is on for asset managers to create the first Bitcoin exchange traded fund in the U.S. after SEC Chairman Gary Gensler signaled he would be open to a pathway for approval of ETFs of popular crypto assets. As new technologies come along, we need to be sure that we're achieving our core public policy goals. And in finance, what's that about? Protecting investors and consumers, guarding against illicit activity, and ensuring financial stability. But there are some caveats to all this, of course. And joining me to break down all the latest is Todd Rosenbluth. He's the head of ETF and mutual fund research at CFRA. So Todd, what do you think of the SEC chairman's recent comments on all this and what it means for investors? So we at CFRA had expected there would not be approval for a Bitcoin ETF, a physical Bitcoin ETF, which is what was being offered by many of the asset managers for years to come. The, the tea leaves just didn't look positive. The comments out of the SEC were, were quite negative in terms of the risks related to Bitcoin risks related to an ETF that held Bitcoin. And so this was a breath of fresh air. This gives those that are seeking a Bitcoin ETF optimism, including asset managers that might bring a product to market. But there's still some unknowns that we're still trying to sort through. When he was talking about this, it looked like a, a futures-based ETF would probably be the first thing that comes onto a market versus a physical one. Can you talk a little bit about what that difference means and if there's any performance differences in those types of funds? Sure. So let's try to tackle that in two different areas. The SEC seems more comfortable with a futures-based product. There is some enhanced uh, risk controls with the futures market. The futures market uh is more regulated, there's more insight as to what's happening, as opposed to physical Bitcoin, which would be completely unique uh, from a, an investment perspective. So the SEC seems more comfortable in the way that it's structured as a futures-based product. Now, however, up until recently, there weren't futures-based products that were being proposed by asset managers, in part because they're quite different within what we see with a physical, at least when we're talking about gold or other commodity oriented products. Uh, as you touched on, there can and likely will be performance differences. A futures is a, just that, it, it's a guesstimate as to where this asset class is going as opposed to where it is. Uh, and so there will be a, a often performance differences between a futures based product and the physical uh, security that it's attempting provide exposure to. And then lastly, if I may, there's costs that are related to each month rolling forward uh, the futures to the next month. Now, as a, okay, if you're if it's up significantly, it's going to eat in a bit, but it's going to eat into the potential returns. And that's something investors need to be wary of, or at least aware of. No, that's a great point. And, and as you said, you know, a lot of asset managers have been pushing at least for the last decade to get a, a physical crypto ETF to the market. You know, can you get a sense that you know, these latest comments, are, have we reached a tipping point with uh, Bitcoin and cryptocurrency hitting mainstream that the SEC is finally you know, being open to this? I think it's more that the SEC wants it on terms that they can better control the risk environment. I think there is demand for such a product. There's long been demand for a product, but the more asset managers that enter the marketplace or potentially enter with a filing, these are well-established asset managers, uh, Wisdom Tree, Global X, VanEck Vectors, among them that have a proposal. These are firms that know how to talk to ETF investors and also know how to talk to the SEC about how to bring a, a product to market. But I don't expect the SEC is feeling pressure to bring something to market. I think they want to do it the right way, because once you once they, they say it's OK to launch a product, it's out there. And then there's nothing they can do to, to limit the risk uh, after the fact the way they can before the fact. You mentioned Vanek and a couple of these other funds. And, you know, in the few weeks since uh, these remarks, there have been a number of applications for some of these Bitcoin futures ETFs. Um, so as far as the timeline, what's your sense? When do you think investors can expect to see these funds come online? That's the major unknown. So before we had futures based products, we thought it would be years. Uh, now it's conceivable. 
that something comes to market uh, or not comes to market is approved. It obviously could come to market soon after by the end of the year. We think 2022 is perhaps more reasonable. If for no other reason, then the SEC likely does not want to play favorites. If this is the whatever the first product that comes to market is likely to see assets and then the second less assets and the third less and so forth. This is going to be a race to launch the first product. It seems reasonable that the SEC wants to get enough of these firms that are willing to follow their rule book to launch a product at the same time. And that's going to require uh, trying to line these things up. And that probably is 2022 at the earliest, in our opinion. Well, Todd, thank you so much for your insights today. It's very much appreciated. Thank you. Have a great day. And you can head on over to investors.com for more of our crypto coverage. For Investors Business Daily, I'm Alexis Garcia. Hey everyone, thanks so much for watching Investors Business Daily on YouTube. If you wanna watch more videos, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a thing.